my imagination or has my class grown considerably? Well, by no stretch of my imagination. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Okay, so it's early in the season, and typically what I like to do when it's this early in the season is do a few advanced lawn care tips, and as I said in the last video, I'll say it in this one, don't let those palm trees scare you. It doesn't matter what your grass type is, this tip is for everyone, because what I'm gonna teach you how to do is spray 6,600 square feet with just a two gallon sprayer. The reason that is significant, and by the way, we're not spraying here today, but the reason that is significant is because I've always taught that one gallon of spray mix covers 1,000 square feet. And the reason that I've taught you that is because it keeps everything simple it makes the math easier and some of you you actually get confused just with that math which is fine repetition is the key to learning and I'll keep going over that over and over and over but for those of you that are advanced some of you are like man I want to be able to flex I want to be able to do bigger areas without having to upgrade my equipment and buy like a pull behind sprayer or you know buy another four gallon backpack or whatever it is you don't like to keep filling over and over and over so today I'm going to show you how to get much larger areas done with that same two gallon sprayer that you have now as with a lot of the videos that I put out I also have blog posts that support those because it it's just too much to put all of it into a video so if you look below in the description I have two or three blog posts that I written, wrote last fall that kind of go into a lot of the different details behind this and how you're able to do this. We talk about dilution ratios. We also talk about the T-Jet tips and as far as each one and the output and pounds per square inch or pressure from your sprayer, all of that stuff. That's all linked below. I'll go over some of that here in this video, but again, much more detail for those blog posts for those of you that really want to go deep and learn this concept. All right, so you guys know I always promise you the tips and I'm delivering today. So this is the Field King sprayer. I've been using this now for, man, it seems like forever, but a long enough time. I've run so many tanks of stuff through this. This thing is tried and true, it works great. Comes with this diaphragm pump on the top, so it is a battery powered sprayer. And I'll link below to this, you can get them on Amazon. Now, the thing about it is, they also make a knockoff version. Really this company, all they do is just put different names on stuff. but. You want to get the Field King version. If you get the Scott's knockoff version, it actually doesn't come with the ability to change the tips. You'll have to buy some additional throats or elbows or whatever they are to make it work. But if you buy the actual Field King one, and it's a couple bucks more, it'll actually come. So all you can do is just buy these tips separately. And these are T-Jet tips. Again, much more information linked in the blog post below. This is the gray one. I'm going to change this out and we're gonna put on a brown one. Now, now when you get these, they're all color coded and that lets you know basically how large the orifice is or how much can come out at each, uh, at each different pressure and I'll put up a chart to show you that, but the long and the short of it is they come in the metal and they also come in plastic. It's really gonna do the same thing. I just like the metal because the way they look, but the plastic are cheaper. They work exactly the same. You can see I have all these different colors like, these right here, these put out a lot more, and these are more restrictive and put out a lot less. And that's part of the key to being able to get more square footage done from this two gallons is that I'm going to restrict the flow and only allow a smaller amount to come out. So it gives me longer for this to pump out. It takes much longer to pump out. In fact, I'm gonna show you the math here in a second. It takes much longer to pump out, so I have more time to literally walk more land and get more land done. All right, so let me give you a little more context here. The first thing is whenever you have a battery powered unit, you're gonna wanna find out what the PSI is. That's the output of the unit, the pounds of pressure per square inch. You can find that easily on the Amazon listing. It says here that the Field King keeps you at a constant pressure of 20 PSI. Next, what this allows you to do is go to the T-Jet charts that show the output of each one of these tips based on that PSI. You can see the brown tip at 20 PSI puts out 0.35 gallons per minute. Once you have those two pieces of information, you'll now know how long it's gonna take your sprayer to empty out. Okay, so I got my brown tip on here and I've already done a little bit of math ahead of time for this. Now, one of the things I'll just say real quick, when you use a pump sprayer like this, one of the advantages is you can do what's called tank mixing, which is you can put a couple different products together. And in this case, I'm using RGS, Root Growth Stimulant, which we're going to do the Bermuda, and I wanna get that Bermuda kicked off and running 
And so that's what that'll do. If you're on any of my lawn plans, this is one of the first biostimulants we use. And then I'm also using Pennant Magnum. Pennant Magnum is a pre-emergent that I recommend for only a small percentage of you, not sponsored. You should only use Pennant Magnum if you have warm season turf and you've had a problem with dove weed and or Kalinga or sedges. It, it works on a lot of other things. It stops crabgrass and a bunch of other things. I'll put a list up there for you. But it's super expensive, and this is enough to last a homeowner like five to ten years. Uh, I'll be using it, though, out on larger properties, so it's worth it to me. But the big thing here is, is I know in my Bermuda last year, I got decimated by doveweed, and prodiamine doesn't do anything to, to stop it. This will suppress doveweed. It doesn't stop doveweed altogether, but it suppresses it. Same with sedges. It suppresses it. But that suppression is enough that it knocks it back enough that I can get to it with a post-emergent and knock them out. So I've had great success with this, and when I don't use it, I get destroyed by my number one enemy, again, which is doveweed. As we move forward, you're going to need to know what size area you're treating. I'm going to be treating the Bermuda over at the church, which is 6,600 square feet. The website I used for this is called Map Developers. So now my area that I'm treating is 6,600 square feet. It's Bermuda over at the church. And that means then if I look at the use rates, the pendant magnum, the use rate is 11 to 28 milliliters per thousand. I'm going towards the top end and I just use 25 to make my math easy. So 6.6, .6, which is the size of my lawn, 6,600 square feet. 6.6 .6 times 25 means I need 165 milliliters of pennant magnum to cover 6,600 square feet. RGS, as you know, is a root growth stimulant. It is one of, in my programs, it's one of the biostimulants that I always recommend starting the year off with. So 6.6, .6, the use, use rate there is three ounces per thousand. So 6.6 .6 times three, 19.8 ounces. So I'm gonna put both of those into here. Now this is where the newbies will get confused because you're like, well, Alan, you said you can only cover 2,000 square feet with a two gallon sprayer. And when you're new and you're not sure and you don't want to be confused, that is the case. That keeps the math easy. It keeps everything simple, keeps every all of us talking in the same language. But when you get more advanced, you can actually get a lot more out of one tank because of what is called the dilution ratio. Okay, now here's where the big boy math comes in, and I do have linkage below in the blog post where this is all written out because that might be easier for some of you to understand, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the video here as well. So on the label of RGS, you will see the minimum dilution ratio is seven to one. That means seven parts water to one part concentrate. Now you can dilute it much more than that or much greater than that, but you can't make it any more concentrated than seven to one. So at a seven to one ratio, that means there are eight parts total in the mix. Seven parts are water and one part is the concentrate itself. A two gallon sprayer, which is what I'm using here, holds 256 ounces of liquid. To stay within the required ratio, that then means I can take 256 and divide it by eight, and I realize that each part in the mix is 32 ounces. Seven parts of that are water, and one part of that can be concentrate. That means I can put 32 ounces of concentrate into this two gallon sprayer, the rest would be water, and I will be within the required seven to one dilution ratio. The way I check to see if I'm gonna match that with my mix is I look at what rate am I going to apply the RGS, and in this case it's three ounces per thousand square feet. I have 6,600 square feet, so I take three times 6.6 .6 and I get 19.8. I'm going to be putting 19.8 ounces of the RGS concentrate into this sprayer. 19.8 is well under the 32, so I am well within my 7 to 1 dilution ratio. If it was higher, then I'd have to back down the amount of concentrate I was using, but in this case, I'm good to go. Now, the first thing I want to do, though, is fill this halfway with water. Whenever you're tank mixing, well, in general, whenever you're doing any kind of concentrates in here. You want to have the sprayer filled halfway with water first. And before we get to mixing, a lot of people ask me if I need surfactants for these things. Just let me give you a general rule. You only need a surfactant for something that is supposed to stick to the leaves of the grass. Typically things that you're watering into the soil, they don't need a surfactant because you don't want them to stick, you want them to flow. So we'll put in the pennant first, according to my fill sheet. And I always write this out ahead of time so I'm not having to think about it later. 165 milliliters. This is what I'm working with. This is 30 milliliters. So five times 30 is 150. And then this end here 
is a 15, so that'll give me my 165. So five of these, one of these. Probably be easier if I had a if I had a cup that had the measurements on it, but I don't. And I always like to agitate that, get that stirred around real good. A lot of people like to shove a drill in here and stuff. I've never found a need for that. Good old fashioned arm power works just fine. Now on the RGS, 19.8 ounces is what we need, so almost 20. So right there. Now before we run, let's review. This sprayer is gonna put out 20 PSI and that tip, the brown tip that's on there is going to allow 0.35 gallons per minute. So I have a two gallon sprayer. If I divide that by 0.35 gallons per minute, that means it's gonna take five minutes and 43 seconds or 5.71 seconds. So five minutes, 43 seconds to empty this out. Five minutes and 43 seconds is plenty of time to walk 6,600 square feet comfortably and get that sprayed out evenly. Last thing I'll say is people always think that this sprayer isn't fully filled up. You need to watch because it's shaped like a bowling pin. It's fatter down here and thinner up here. It's deceiving. It is full because the max fill line is right there. 